Greetings everyone, my name is Reynolds and today we're talking data slate predictions and expectations because I have some expectations, you probably have some expectations as well, and I think this is a good time to talk about it, but first and foremost, when is the data slate coming? Well, we know from the MetaWatch article or MetaWatch video that came out that it's coming sometime in the end of January. Las Vegas Open, also known as LVO, which is the biggest Warhammer 40k tournament in the entire world, is happening January 18th to January 21st. So a good prediction is the week after LVO. So that would be the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, something around there. That being said, the data slate could come before that. However, in previous years, the data slate has been before LVO, but Games Workshop might want to not force the players at LVO to be playing with old rules. That also hurts incentive to watch the streams because yeah you're watching these great players and they're good at the game but they're playing with old rules so it doesn't really matter anymore so from an incentive standpoint it makes sense that gw wouldn't release the data slate before lvo was over so expectations are sometime in the week after lvo now for those of you who are new to the game or maybe just not really caught up about how warhammer is updated let's break that down really quickly so, first and foremost, every three months is a new data slate. And the data slate is kind of like a patch for a video game, but for Warhammer 40k. That means that we'll see rule changes and point changes, but GW has made it clear that in 10th edition, they would rather touch points first and then rules after. This means that in most cases, if they feel like they can fix a faction by simply changing points, that's what they will do first. But if they deem that that is not enough, then they will also look at changing the rules. In the last data slate, we saw both point changes and rule changes. That being said, that was the first data slate after 10th edition's release. So it does make sense that they did points and rules for that one. For this one, however, they might just do points. We don't quite know yet. In 9th edition, every six months, we would also get something called a new grand tournament pack. And this is the one where we are unsure if that is also happening for 10th edition. 10th edition is quite different from 9th edition in the fact that in 9th edition you had a preset of secondaries you could choose from and then you had some faction secondaries. Those are of course gone, replaced by the tactical missions or fixed missions. So GW could decide to come out with new deployment zones, new primary missions, new mission rules, but keep the same tactical objectives and fixed objectives or they could make some completely new ones for all of it, or they could keep it all the same. We don't really know how they're going to handle that part yet, so that remains to be seen. All right, that was like the breakdown of what a data slate is and what to expect from it. Let's talk custodies. That is what my channel is about. That's the faction I play. That's the faction the majority of you guys watching play. What can we expect? So let's first and foremost talk about what happened in the last data slate to custodies. It's pretty clear by now that Custodes were one of the factions that were nerfed the most. Individually, we might not have been nerfed the most, but because of game changes, alongside those individual changes, that turned out to be a very big nerf to Custodes, and that's why they aren't doing so well right now. So, first and foremost, the game-wide changes that impact the Custodes was, for example, the change to Devastating Wounds. Before, Devastating Wounds were Mortal Wounds. And that worked actually in Custodes' favor because our detachment ability gives us a 4-up Feel No Pain against Mortal Wounds. That being said, Devastating Wounds were incredibly overpowered against so many other factions because some factions had access to some very big guns where they could guarantee that it would become Devastating Wounds. And even if they couldn't guarantee it was Devastating Wounds, it was still very strong because it worked well against infantry, it worked well against chaff, it worked well against vehicles, it just worked well against everything. So in general, I think the changes to Devastating Wounds was a good change. However, it hurt Custodes very badly because we went from having a save against that damage to just not having one at all. The second change that was part of the game-wide rule changes that impacted Custodes a lot was the change to free battle tactics, or rather free stratagems, which is now only usable on battle tactics. This meant a lot less flexibility in using our stratagems. Our stratagems are very powerful and we want to use them very often. But because we cannot just use them for free all the time, that also means you now need to make some specific decisions on when to use it and when to save it, when to spend command points, when to save those command points. 
That was an overall game change that was probably for the better, but once again hurt Custodes a lot. For the faction rule changes, specifically for Custodes, our fight first stratagem is now an epic deed, meaning we cannot do it for free anymore. This was a problematic stratagem because it basically invalidated any melee unit in the game to go into combat with Custodes. Another faction change was the change to our unit sizes for guards, wardens, which I actually think was a buff, and Virtus Praetors. Guards used to be able to be taken in 10-man squads, 9 or 10-man squads. That was problematic because it became a stat check game. Many lists would run 2 times 9 custodian guards with a leader in each, then deep strike one of them, rabbit ingressed and then just ask the opponent, can you deal with these 20 custodians just marching on your position? No? Okay, you lose the game. Now, just really quick why I say wardens, it was a buff for wardens. That's mostly because, for some reason, the maximum size of units for wardens was 6. But there's only 5 wardens in a box, so I, I take that as a buff in, in, in my own opinion. Virtus Praetor unit size was also nerfed for absolutely no reason at all, because they were really bad. They are still really bad. So that one was a little bit strange. And then for point changes, we saw a 5 plus point per model change for guards, wardens, and Alaris. So guards went up to 50 points per model, wardens 55 points per model, and Alaris from 65 to 70 points per model. And then one of the biggest nerfs, actually, was that all characters went up by 20 points, except for Valyrian and the Sister of Silence characters. The Blade Champion was 100 points, he's now 120. The Shield Captains was 120, now 140. And let's be clear, the Custodes character were already expensive before the data slate. A Shield Captain for 120 points, that equals roughly 2.5 Custodian Guards from their old point cost. Today, they are just really expensive, costing almost three times as much as a single custodian guard. That being said, they have some really good rules. Double karate, free stratagem, blade champion advance and charge, re-rolling advances and charges. So it's not like our characters are bad at all, they're just really expensive. And custodies in general is really expensive because it's a super heavy elite infantry army, and so that is one of the biggest issues we've seen after the data slate. It's just very expensive to include a character in those custodian units. However, you kind of need a character in those units for them to get their full potential. Custodian guards are kind of too slow to just not have a blade champion in them. Wardens do, do not get access to their minus one to wound ability if there's not a character in the unit. Alaris terminators are such a heavy investment in points that if you don't include a character in the unit, it feels like you're not getting the most out of them, because if you cannot use minus one damage on them when they're being shot at, you might just lose the unit entirely. And so that is, in, one of, uh, in my opinion, one of the biggest nerfs, was that the Custodius characters went up by 20 points, making them almost three times as expensive as the unit they join per model. Alright, that was a quick breakdown of what happened to Custodius last data slate. Let's now talk about the expectations for the new coming data slate. Starting off with the core rules. What could possibly change for the core rules compared to what we're seeing in the game right now? First and foremost, let's talk about indirect fire. Many of the worst offenders of indirect fire got a decently hefty nerf last data slate, but many factions still bring a lot of indirect fire because it's just so damn efficient. Many of these platforms have 48 inch range or even more, so they can basically be parked on your home deployment objective, screen out your deployment zone, and still do their job very efficiently. On top of that, many armies have abilities to ignore indirect penalties, either by the heavy rule, which means that if they remain stationary, they get plus one to hit, which, I mean, they're indirect firing platforms, why would they move anywhere? They have no reason to do so. Others ignore cover, which again, uh, that's a core part of indirect fire, is that you're supposed to get cover from that indirect fire, but now you just don't. So, indirect fire changes could possibly be a thing we see in the data slate. The most realistic change we're looking at is that they're changing the minus one to hit to be minus one to ballistic skill. That way, if your unit has a minus one to hit, or you have a stratagem for minus one to hit, that will stack alongside the minus one ballistic skill, effectively giving the opponent minus two to hit, meaning that you can actually make them shoot worse indirect fire, even if they have heavy or plus one to hit or something else. 
Another thing we need to talk about is devastating wounds. Now, this is a big issue for custodies, but it's still just an issue in general throughout the entire game. We still see basically every single faction who has access to devastating wounds bring them. Especially if it's on a really good platform, such as a Forge Fiend. Now, I don't think there's any great change to make devastating wounds more easily handled when it comes to actually changing the rules of devastating wounds. I think that is just a case of having to change the points cost of the models that carry those weapons. But that also brings a totally new issue in that because war gear is free in 10th edition, for example, the Forge Fiend, if it goes up by, let's just say, 50 points, well, now it might be too expensive to bring. But the version of the Forge Fiend that doesn't have those devastating wounds, plasma guns, is now completely irrelevant. And that just completely ruins the model. So devastating wounds, as is now, is probably the most balanced devastating wounds is going to be. That being said, for custodies, as well as a lot of other units in other armies that give you a feel no pain against mortal wounds, I could see a change being added with a wording such as, if a unit has the feel no pain ability against mortal wounds, this also applies to devastating wounds. This way, all of those units that give your unit, when they join it, the leader, that gives the ability to have a feel no pain against mortal wounds, will actually do something against devastating wounds. Because right now, a lot of those units, including the entire detachment of custodies, barely even matter. Compared to devastating wounds, there's almost no mortal wounds in the game. So that is a possible change that could happen. Do keep in mind that I'm not expecting any of these changes. This is just meant as predictions and thoughts about what could change when it comes to core rules. The final thing to talk about for core rules is the free stratagem change. I think it was a good change because, again, some armies just had way too easy of a time just using stratagems that were really good in any situation for free. But there is also the case of some units that can use free stratagems and even some armies that cannot really use battle tactic stratagems. Now, I play Custodes, so that is my prime example, but the Virtus Praetor Captain cannot use the minus one damage stratagem because it only works on infantry. His unit is not infantry, they're mounted. The plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles does not stack with lands, which again, the Virtus Praetors have. So in theory, the only possible stratagem that the Virtus Praetor unit can use via the Captain is Avenge the Fallen, which is not an amazing stratagem, and that really just means that the captain's free stratagem ability doesn't really do anything. So what I was trying to get at with that is that we might see some changes to how free stratagems is applied on armies. We might see some changes to what can be used for free. They might change it to be, you know, battle tactics and strategic ploys or battle tactics and epic deeds. Or they might just change up, you know, the keywords for those stratagems and say, oh, this is now battle tactic and this is now whatever else. All right, that's it for possible core rule changes, in my opinion, based on what we're seeing in the game right now. Let's now move over to some Custodes faction changes specifically. And here I only have one realistic change I can see coming, and that would be unit size. Now, first of all, I need to say that I would be extremely surprised if we got 10-man squads back. I don't believe that is happening. However, what I do think is a little bit weird is that some units can have four models, such as Wardens and Guards, while other units, such as the Sagittarum, is stuck at five models for the minimum-sized unit. There is also the potential of letting Custodes go back to some of their 9th edition abilities, meaning that basically all infantry units can start at three models instead of four models. This would allow you to have some more MSU play, which you can use to hold objectives, or play secondaries, which currently the only way custodies are playing secondaries is by using Sisters of Silence and Assassins. No one is taking MSU custodian units at the moment because they're too expensive to not be a brick, basically. Four custodian guards are 200 points, but without a character, they aren't fast enough to get into melee, which is where they really shine. And at 200 points, they're also quite a bit too expensive to just sit at a point and, you know, do nothing. So, I could see a world where GW allows us to focus on Custodes, and for those that just want to play Custodes, by allowing Guards Warden Sagittarum to be taken in three model units. Then there's also the Virtus Praetor size, unit size change, which was just like, again, it, they're already bad. Did we really need to change that? So, I could totally see that being completely reverted, 
So you can go back to taking between or up to six of them in a unit. And then finally, we have the point changes for custodies. Um, lots of stuff that could change here. I'm just going to talk about what I expect and then what I think that has potential to change. I expect that all of the point changes we talked about is going to be reverted. That means that guards go back to 45 points per model, wardens go back to 50 points per model, and characters go back 20 points. The only exception to this could potentially be Alaris Terminators. They have proven to be quite a bit of a powerhouse when spammed in lists, where you take 3 units of 6 or 3 units of 5 or whatever, and that can be quite strong. So, logic could be that if you take the Alaris back to 65 points, the meta list for Custodies will not change. It'll still be, you know, 15 to 18 Alaris Custodians, but now they just have more points to take, say, secondary scoring mission units. So that might be a thing where GW is like, all right, uh, Alaris Terminators at 70, at 70 points per model, that is still fine. But for everything else, I believe we will go back to the points cost of the index upon release. With the exception of like Sagittarium and all that, just, just to be clear, I'm meaning all the negative point changes I think will be reverted. Now there are some other things that could be changed in points. First and foremost, Sagittarium could be going down to 40 points per model. They are currently 45 points per model. But remember, they are locked in that 5-man unit, which means that bringing one Sagittarium unit, even though each model is less expensive than a Consodian Guard unit, in total they are 25 points more expensive, and let's be real, Sagittarium aren't exactly the greatest unit around at the moment. Then there is one of the coolest models for a lot of Custodius mo uh, players, which is the Telamon Dreadnought. And he is just a little bit of a joke compared to the Redemptor Dreadnought. In Melee, they have the exact same profile, except that the Telamon, of course, is hitting on twos. Now, you could argue that because he has access to sustained hits, that makes him better. But the Redemptor Dreadnought has access to Oath of Moment. And if you're not a mathematician when it comes to dice, Hitting on twos or hitting on threes but re-rolling, in general, gives you the same result. The Telemon's gun is just infinitely worse than the Redemptor Dreadnought. Yes, the Redemptor Dreadnought might take three mortal wounds, but that is a 16.66% chance every time he shoots. The Telemon can either get a gun, which is effectively two devastating wounds whenever he shoots, and that's basically it, or he can get like a strength 9 AP1 damage 3 gun, which I mean, everything gets cover in 10th edition, so effectively it's AP0, and damage 3 means that you want to be shooting it at something like, say, a Terminator, and they'll have a 2-up save against it, and at that point it just, it just doesn't matter. The Spiculous Bolt Launcher on top of the Telemon is basically equivalent to the two Frag Storm Grenade Launchers of a Redemptor Dreadnought, but the Redemptor Dreadnought also has the Icarus Rocket Pod. Overall, as I said, I just think the Telemon is a little bit of a joke compared to the Redemptor Dreadnought, He's currently 235 points. I could easily see him go down to 220 points or even lower than that. But again, this is just guessing and GW might be totally fine with leaving this big cool guy at 235 points. Speaking of dreadnoughts, they all suck. <laughs> Let's be real. They all just kind of suck. And for all of them, I could see a 15 to 20 points cost reduction. And even then, they would still be bad. They would just be slightly less bad. Finally, we have the Caladius Graph Tank, which has basically been an auto-include for two of them in almost every single top-placing tournament list we've seen for Custodes. So I wouldn't be surprised if that gets a small increase just because they want people to take other things than the Caladius Graph Tank. So that one might go from the 215 points it is right now to 220 or 225, but it could also totally stay as is. I don't think the Caladius Graph Tank is busted. That being said, GW might look at lists and be like, this is included very often, so it must be a little bit too efficient, therefore we need to take it down a notch. And that's really all I have to say about the coming data slate. I'm not expecting any rules changes for Custodes, because I think they'll save that for the Codex that's coming sometime in the spring. As we mentioned at the start of the video, GW have made it clear that they want to change points first, rules after. And seeing as there is probably going to be about three months between the data slate and custodies getting their codex, that would make sense that they're just like, we're just going to save any rules changes for the codex. We'll see how the point changes will work for them. If it's not enough, then we'll start looking at rules changes. But these are just my predictions and opinions. 
Leave yours in the comments below, and while you're down there, consider hitting the like and subscribe button, it really helps out the channel a lot. Check out the Discord if you'd like to talk with me and a lot of other Custodes players. And until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful time.